Hallelujah. How many came expecting to hear from the Lord today? How many came in here today to worship the Lord and release your faith in His goodness? This isn't a religious gathering. This is a group of people that come together. To come together to lift our hands, open our mouth, release our faith in our God. Amen. Minister unto the Lord our thanksgiving. He's worthy of all praise. How many say God's been good to you? Hallelujah. God loves you. He's directing us. He's leading us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for orchestrating this service today. Thank you, Lord, for every person that's here today. We thank you, Lord God. And Lord, you're interested in every detail of our lives. So, Lord, today we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit that he could have his way, that he would flow. He would minister to us. He would lead us and guide us in this service. Father, we thank you for it. Thank you for your anointing that destroys every yoke, removes every burden. Father, we thank you this atmosphere is clear of any hindrances in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We bind every hindering force in Jesus' name. Thank you for your ministering angels driving back darkness, driving back evil, staying back the hand of the darkness. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We speak peace and shalom in this house. Hallelujah. We speak peace, shalom this house. Well, praise God. Give the Lord a big shout of praise in here today. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. I think there's some, some people here that just want to shout today. Amen. Sometimes you just got to shout. Hallelujah. Oh, we just praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of good things taking place. There's a lot of good things taking place. We know the enemy, he is trying to, trying to bring a storm. You just have to look at him and say, I am the storm. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. We're going to pray together here for a moment. First of all, we want to keep those at Virginia, in Virginia Beach in our prayers. People say, well, why does that take place? Well, there's a devil. There is an enemy. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll take and wreak havoc in people's minds and make them do things that, man, that just bombard their mind with thoughts. There's an antichrist spirit also that's loosed in this world and is targeting Christians all around the world. There's some, there's some horrible things taking place. But thank God we have the word. Thank God we have the truth. We can stand on God's promises. Amen. So we pray for those, Father, right now in Virginia Beach. We pray for the families and all those that were affected. We pray, Lord God, you minister to them, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask you to bring a supernatural peace and comfort to each one of them. Surround each one of the families, Lord, with, with people who would give wise counsel that would minister to them wise counsel. Father, we thank you for that. Lord, I pray that blinders be removed, that people's hearts would be open and receptive and they would turn to you. They would realize that the enemy does come to steal, kill, and destroy, but you come to give life. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you'll minister life in this situation. And what the devil's meant for evil, you'll turn it around. Father, we thank you that many souls will be reached for you at this time. Father, we pray for the sheriff of this town, the former sheriff. We pray, we pray for his family, Lord God, his wife and kids, and Lord, those that were affected by this, the sheriff department, all those affected. Father, we just pray that you bring healing to this town, bring healing to the family, Father. Minister to each one of them. Lord, let us be a voice. Let us be a voice that can minister to each one of them, Lord, that are hurting.
Lord, we know the world is hurting. We know people are hurting. Father, I thank you. I ask you for sensitivity. Just ask the Lord for sensitivity. Give us sensitivity, Lord, so that, Lord, we could be sensitive to those around us. That, Lord, we would give ourselves to prayer. That we would pray and great things would take place. That, Lord, we would be a voice that we could be used by you to speak words of encouragement to those who are hurting. Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. How many know that God will answer those prayers? Amen. We've been, we've been studying about angels. Last week started talking about angels, and we saw in Acts chapter 12, we saw where James was beheaded, and then the church got serious and began to pray. And when they began to pray, the Lord dispatched an angel into the prison to rescue Peter. He went right into the prison. The chains fell off of Peter. He walked Peter clean out, out of the prison to his freedom. Are you listening? Now that just didn't happen accidentally. It happened because people were praying. The church, the Bible says, was earnestly praying. In Acts chapter 12, verse 5, it says, As Peter was kept in prison, but fervent prayer for him was persistently made to God by the church. How do we know when the church prays, something happens? You're here because somebody prayed. You're here because earnest prayer went up on your behalf. How many believe that God rescued you? I know that I'm here because somebody earnestly, earnestly prayed for me. I teasingly say my mother, I taught my mother how to pray. She'd cry out to God on my behalf. And, and, uh, but thank God for people that will pray, give themselves to prayer. Well, we were asked, sent a message from uh, Franklin Graham. How many know Franklin Graham? And he's asking all the churches in the nation, all the churches around to pray for the president, pray for those in, in, uh, in his administration. And, uh, and I think it's a worthy thing to do. Amen? If we would pray, God will move. Here's what the Bible says, and we like to have scripture on this. And before you get mad, say, I ain't praying for that president. Well, here's what the Bible says. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 says, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all those in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness, godliness and honesty. For, this, for praying this way is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. God is our source. God is our Savior, and, and it's not the government. Look at your neighbors that the government's not our Savior. But we need to pray. He says, we will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. So as you pray, God will move. You know, there's a lot of adversarial hosts who like to see this nation go down. There's an enemy that loved to see this nation go down. He loved to bombard the president and those around the president with thoughts. They would make the wrong decisions. But if the church will pray, God will raise up the president, give him wisdom, raise up people around him to speak into his life. It didn't say pray if you like him, but it says pray for whoever's in that position. Amen? Amen. You may not like some of the things he does. We'll pray that he'll just quit tweeting some crazy, stupid stuff. You can pray that and God will move. Amen? There's a lot of manufactured hate. A lot of things that are stirred up by the adversary. But we were asked to pray. And I thank God for the president who is probably one of the most pro-Christian presidents we've ever had. One of the most pro-life presidents we've ever had. One of the most pro-Israel presidents we've ever had. Amen. You may disagree with a lot of things he does, but I love some of his policies. He's made some good decisions. So obviously he's got some good people around him and giving him some good counsel. And that's what we pray. Amen. Amen. Here's what it says in Acts chapter 4, verses 29. Now here was Peter and John. They got released from the prison. It says, now the Lord, he said, they went to their own company, but they began to pray. Here's what he said in verse 29. Now, Lord, observe their threats and grant to your bondservants full freedom to declare your message fearlessly. Amen. Amen. So as they all began to pray in verse 31, it says, and when they had prayed, the place that they were in, the assembly that was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they continued to speak the word of God with freedom, boldness, and courage. Amen. I mean, believe God will raise up some people that have the freedom, boldness, and courage to speak for such a time as this. 
Amen. I'm believing that God will put some backbone in the congressman, put some backbone in those people, righteous men and women will rise up and take a rightful stand. Put a backbone in some of the governors of this country, they'll take a rightful stand. Well, He will if you'll pray. If you'll pray instead of complain, God will move. He'll move in great and wonderful ways. Church has to pray. So frankly, Graham asked us to pray, and He's a voice, man. He's a prophetic voice in this hour. Matthew 18, 19 says, Again, I say unto you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. So, Father, right now we come together as a church family. Father, the cry has gone out for the church to pray. Lord, to pray in this hour, to pray at this time, Father God. Father, we lift up the president. We lift up his family right now. We pray for him, Lord, that you would protect him, that you would watch over him, that, Lord God, that you would remove any obstacles off his mind, that, Lord God, you would remove the adversarial host that's been arrayed against him. Father, we pray that you would flood him with peace and open his eyes to see. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, give him ears to hear your voice. That, Lord God, you could speak to him, Lord God. You could direct his steps, Father God. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would direct his steps. That he would make the right decisions for this nation. That he would make the decisions that you would have him make. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that he could be an influence as you influence him. Father, we bind the devil. We take authority over Satan and all of his cohorts. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that your ministry spirits are loosed to do a work. To a do work in this nation. Through the leadership in this nation. Father, we ask you to remove any person that needs to be removed. And put the right people in the right position. We ask you to do that, Father. We ask you, Lord God, that you administer those in Congress. The Lord God, we just... Oh, Father... Oh, Father, we just, we just intercede for them, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just pray that, Lord, there be unity. Lord God, that you can minister, Lord God, and do a mighty work. That, Lord God, we pray right now for a spiritual awakening to take place in this, in this Congress, Lord. That, Lord God, you would visit the Congress, Father God. You would visit them in a supernatural way. Lord, open their eyes to see. Lord, may the reverential fear of God hit that place. May revival hit that place, Father God. Father, we ask, Lord God, you would baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, Father, raise up the Mordecais. Raise up the Esthers in this hour, Father God. May they have boldness and courage and freedom to speak the word of the Lord. Lord, let them know, Lord, they have a voice now, and you give them a voice. They'll speak as an oracle of yours. Father, we thank you for your mercy on this nation we repent as a nation Father God for all the little babies slaughtered we pray Lord God that you would move and rescue the babies rescue those babies Father God Father we ask you to do that we thank you for moving in that situation Father we give you praise we thank you Lord you're not done with this country the Lord God the church would pray that Lord God you would move in a great and a mighty way so Father we thank you for a spiritual awakening all across this land. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom. Grant each person that's making those decisions wisdom. Lord, we thank you for that. You would direct their steps. Visit them in a midnight hour. Lord God, show yourself strong. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a big shout of praise in here today. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Now listen, if you prayed in faith, you can believe that God heard your prayer. And when somebody tries to come up talk negative and say things, no, I prayed. I prayed and God is moving in spite of what it looks like. God is moving and the angelic force is moving. Great things are taking place in this country. Amen. In spite of what it may look like in the natural. The church is praying. The church is praying. Things are going to take place when the church prays. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What are we going to do? They say, what are we going to do? You're going to pray. What are we going to do? All this stuff is going to... You're going to pray. What are you going to do? You're going to pray. Not just today. You pray when you leave here. You pray. You earnestly pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Let the Holy Spirit pray through you the perfect prayer. Hallelujah. Then just be expected. Be expected. There is going to be a great revival in this country that this country has never seen before. It's coming. Amen. We're right. We're right. We stepped right into it. But I mean, there's a great awakening taking place. God is shaking some things. He's shaking. That's why the devil's throwing everything he has. He's doing everything he can to try to destroy this country. I just let you know that's true. That's just confident. That's just uh, 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 what do you call it? Confirmation. That's confirmation that he's mad. He sees some things happening. But praise God, we are the storm. Amen. We are the storm. Amen. The church is rising up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! We declare this country is your country. We declare this town is your town. This is God's town. We bind every spirit. We bind the spirit. Oh, the spirit of religion. We take authority of that strong man of the city. Take authority of that spirit that would try to destroy people's lives. Oh, Father, we pray, Lord God, for this town, Lord God. That, Lord God, you would move in a mighty way. Let us be a beacon, a light. Lord God, an oasis of your love would flow through this place, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for visiting this town, Father God. Oh, in a mighty way, in a mighty way. How many believe God wants to do that? How many believe God is doing that? He's doing that. Praise God. We're almost ready. We're almost ready to open the ministry up on Main Street. I'm telling you, that's going to be some... The devils are quaking in their boots. They have, they have tried to fight us every inch of the way. But we do not quit. We are relentless. We are relentless. <laughs> we are taking territory. Many lives are going to be touched. When I say the enemy, I'm not talking about people. I'm not talking about there's a devil, an adversary, that's trying to keep the church from taking ground. Are you listening? And it's been a little slower than what we wanted to see, but... Oh, it's it's a mighty work. We got a prayer room up there, man, already a prayer room. There's going to be a lot of prayer going on. Oh, right there on Main Street, we got a prayer room. Intercession and prayer is going to take place. And many souls are going to come into the kingdom. They may not ever come into this church, but they're going to come into the kingdom. Amen. God is going to rescue some souls. Amen. There's some hurting, confused people. God's going to rescue them and love them going to love them. There's an unconditional love that God has for mankind. Amen. And get them on the right track so they can make the right decisions and they can walk out the plan that God has for their life. Amen. How many thank God for doing, for Him doing works in your life? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So pray for that, pray for that outreach. Pray for this church. Pray for other churches. We pray last night for all the pastors in this area, this region, and this nation. We pray. God would raise them up and encourage them and strengthen them and surround them with good, good, faithful church workers. Amen. Things don't happen just because you dream. It happens because you participate. Building never takes place until you get involved. Amen. It takes many hands to make it happen. Amen. Praise God. So we get involved what God wants to do. We catch a vision what God wants to do. We get plugged in, get involved. Great things can take place. We can accomplish much when we all pull together. Amen. We're all going to pull together and accomplish God's will. And you're going to look back and say, thank God. Thank God for all those lives that were touched. Amen. Let's give God another big shout of praise here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.